Welcome to the Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. I'm May, founder of the luxury journaling brand, Luxuriously Fierce. My mission is to guide you in coming back to your natural state of luxury. Step into the power of luxury journaling to unload what no longer serves you, unlock subconscious programming, and awaken passion and purpose. Becoming Luxuriously Fierce is a movement. It is for the woman who is ready to listen to the whispers of her soul, to tap into the ancient wisdom she came here with. It is for the woman who is ready to be bold, step into her feminine power, and lead herself to luxury. It is for the woman who is ready to let go of the subconscious programming that no longer serves her, align with her passion, and become her truest self. You are made for big things. You are made to be bold. You are made for luxury. Are you ready? Welcome back to another episode of the Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. I am so excited today to have Steph Morris back with me. Steph has already been on this podcast and we had such an amazing conversation that could have just gone on for hours and hours and hours that we were like, you need to come back. Like immediately after that first recording, we just looked at each other and we're like, you've got to come back. We need to continue this conversation. And so if you haven't listened to that first episode, Feminine Embodiment in Relationships with Steph Morris, go back and listen to that one first just because it gives you this really beautiful overview of feminine energy and feminine embodiment and what that looks like in your relationships. And that goes for your relationship with yourself as well. So this episode is not just for people who are in romantic relationships or have romantic partners. It's also for you if you are single. So I would really encourage you to head on back and listen to that episode first because today we are diving even deeper into feminine embodiment in relationships and this is just such a beautiful, amazing topic. We all have these feminine and masculine energies within us regardless of how you identify and these patterns of these energies that we have are just so prominent in our in our everyday life. They impact every single moment of your life. And so diving into this topic of feminine embodiment is so broad. It's so beautiful. And I cannot wait to have this conversation because this is going to be so amazing. So Steph, thank you so much for coming back because last time we chatted, it seriously, there were so many things I wanted to ask you. There were so many different topics that I wanted to talk about and so many different directions that I wanted to take our conversation about feminine embodiment, but we would have ended up with like a four hour podcast episode. So (laughs) welcome back and thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited for this conversation part two. And uh, yeah, there's so many different uh, rabbit holes you can kind of go down when you start the conversation. So I'm excited for us to dive deeper today. And I feel like that's really a theme of like what embodiment and feminine embodiment is it's like you peel back the layers and you realize like there's more to learn there's deeper places to go to um and that's such a beautiful like yeah tie in with what that is and this conversation so it really is perfect it really is and i love it too because when we do this inner work and we you know spend our lives I firmly believe that we should kind of spend our lives always growing and learning and evolving. And a big part of that is learning about our energy and embodying what it our truest selves. And that means embodying both the feminine and the masculine energies. But today we're going to talk about feminine embodiment. And in particular, we're going to talk about feminine embodiment in relationships as it pertains to sex, which is going to be... Yes so like so fire i'm really excited for this conversation this is actually not a conversation i've ever had with anybody so i am like (laughs) i know i'm just as newbie (laughs) as anybody listening to this i love it i've got my pen and i am ready to like take so many (laughs) notes so just um quickly before we dive into the topic can you give us a little bit of background for anybody who maybe hasn't gone back and listened to part one Um, Just a little bit of background about what you do and how you help women. Yes. So I'm a feminine embodiment coach. Um, I guide women to really reconnect with their bodies and with themselves 
so that they can really just feel this really deep sense of self-love, feel magnetic energy, and just feel an overall sense of peace, knowing who they are, what they stand for, um, and really what they want to create in their life. Um, and this, my approach is really getting really, really deep. So there's no surface level bullshit <laughs> with, uh, with my coaching. We're really diving deep into stories, beliefs, narratives that um, we're all living. We all have these stories that we are living, which um, are as what we created as children, basically that we're living out as adults. Um, and so embodiment is just really diving down to the deepest parts of ourselves, um, clearing out things that are stuck there, clearing out these old beliefs, getting to the truth of who we are so that we can just live an incredible life that's authentic to ourselves rather than living this life um, based on the narrative we created as a four, five, six year old. So it's a really empowering and liberating way to be. And embodiment is essentially inhabiting our whole self. Um, and that requires us to look at every part of us. It requires us to go beyond the mind, to connect with our bodies, to look at our relationships with our bodies, ourselves, um, and obviously sex is a part of that, our sexuality. And unfortunately it's not, it's not known and talked about as much as I think it needs to be, but here we are having the conversation. And hopefully for me, um, when I started to hear women talk about sex and self-pleasure, it was a permission slip for me to kind of explore that part of myself. And so hopefully this conversation can be that for um, other women who are listening here today because it's really really important and um yeah it needs to be needs to be talked about more and just become a natural conversation that we have i agree and i love that we're having this conversation because like you said it really is kind of like a permission slip and when you talk about these quote unquote hard topics or these things that aren't necessarily talked about on a daily basis or aren't a part of our everyday conversation you open the door for someone else to do the same not to not only talk about these things and have these hard or difficult conversations or maybe uncomfortable conversations, um, but to also have those conversations with themselves and really be able to identify the thoughts and the feelings and the patterns that people have that you have around in just in, for a, this conversation about sex. Because sex really is something that we don't talk about in our society and it's really still considered a taboo topic and I've never really understood why but we just we learn so little about sex and we're just conditioned to believe that it's not really a conversation to be had so let's start the conversation I'm not really sure where to start this conversation so I'm gonna let you kick this off <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's when you start, but that's exactly it. It's like, why, why do we not have this conversation? Why are we not taught about this? I mean, from my own personal experience, um, I mean, I grew up not knowing anything about my body, about sex, about my menstrual cycle, anything like that. And I think most, uh, most people can relate, um, men as well can relate, but there's like a lot of shame around our sexuality and sex and especially as women around self-pleasure and thinking it's this like icky thing. Um, I literally grew up thinking like, do not get pregnant. Like sex equals babies, mm -hmm. equals pregnant, equals life ruined as a teenager. And like, I actually had this fear and I used to celebrate in my head, like, okay, I'm 18 now and I'm not pregnant. I'm not like literally every year I'd be like so happy that I hadn't got pregnant because I that's all I thought it was about. Um, and it's just a really disempowering way to live. And it really creates, I believe it creates this disconnect from our bodies and from ourselves. Um, and it really doesn't have to be that way. And the biggest thing that I learned was that when we are fully connected with our whole selves, inhabiting our whole selves, which includes our sexual side because that is part of us it allows us to reach this deep level embodiment and connecting authentically with who we are at our core and i don't believe that we can really get to that place of like true authentic and living in alignment if we're not exploring that part of ourselves. because if we're cutting ourselves off from that and we still have shame and we're still um 
kind of disconnected from that side of us. I really just don't think we can we can create that connection that we need. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. And just to share, like literally 18 months to two years ago, I couldn't even say the word sex. <laughs> like I was so disconnected um, from my like sensual and sexy side. I couldn't even say the word. And now here we are having this conversation and it's literally one of my favorite conversations to have. Um, anybody who I've met in the last year, I will always bring up sex. <laughs> like with women, we talk about all the things and it's been really cool to hear from some people who have come into my life in the last year who've said, you have no idea how much that conversation that we had around sex or self-pleasure has impacted me. And I've now had that conversation with other people and it's created this like ripple effect with women just from me sharing and having a conversation with people. Um, and I think it's so important. So I'm super excited to to dive into this and um, talk about it because it's so necessary. And I think once I realized that there's no need to feel shameful around self-pleasure because the more we can connect with our sexuality, that's where as women, our power really is. That's where our creativity comes from. That's where our full self-expression comes from. That's where the deep embodied self-love comes from as well. Like there's so much more to it than feeling the pleasure, which we absolutely deserve as well. But there's more, there's more to it than just that pleasure piece. Like there is pure magic when we allow ourselves to go there. So it's pretty freaking cool and magical. And we should be taught this when we're like younger for sure. We really should. And I'm sitting here like even just me saying I don't know how to start this conversation. Like, I'm going to let you kick this off because I don't know how to start this. Like, now I'm like, why don't I know how to start this conversation? Mm. You know, like, why yeah. has this not ha ever, like, why, this isn't something that I've ever learned. And so for anybody who is like, and now you're talking about talking to your friends about this and people that have come into your life and, you know, this is a conversation that you openly have with other people how do you bring up this conversation? Like if you want to talk to people about sex and self-pleasure, how does that come up? Um, I just whip out the question, <laughs> really. <laughs> I mean, usually, I mean, usually I'll, I'll start by, it happens naturally. I mean, I definitely, I definitely chuck it in there, but I'll, people like to talk about relationships and partners and dating. And then that's a great segue to talk about sex. Well, how, you know, sex life or how's your sex life or do you self pleasure? And I, I always bring it up from that aspect because a lot of people who are either in, either you're in a relationship or you're probably seeking out a relationship or you're happily single and just enjoying your alone time, all great. But all of those aspects require us to dive deep with ourselves and with our self-pleasure and sexuality, because we can only then meet um, meet a partner and go as deep with our partner as we've taken ourselves. And that's why it's important that we go there first with ourselves in our self-pleasure practice, exploring our sexuality. And so that's usually how I how we get onto the conversation is through relationship talk or somebody sharing about them dating and that kind of thing, because there's so much we can learn for instance, here's a conversation I was having with a friend the other day. She was talking about being on the apps um, and like going off the apps. And something that my old coach told me was like, if you're going to go on a date or or you want to you wanna be in that like magnetic energy, self-pleasure before. And I was like, why? But it's so true. If you actually self-pleasure before going out on a date or before you're going somewhere where you really want to feel magnetic, if you get into that energy, like you just attract people. Um, so I was telling my telling my friend this and she was like, I tried it and it totally works. And I was like, yes, there we go. Um, so yeah, just starting the conversation through relationships and dating is a great segue because everybody has sex or wants to have sex or you know what I mean? It's like the same thing. Everybody's doing it. It's just not everyone's talking about it. <laughs> That's so true. And I love that you just said um, about self-pleasuring and using that as a segue to magnetic energy because if you're looking at the chakra system your creative center is in that part of your body right like your your 
your creativity, your feminine flow, your you know ability to be inspired is all located in that sacral part of your body. And so if you, so many people, you know, if you want to open up your creativity and, you know, be more kind of flowy with life and all of these kinds of things, like, it's it's a literal portal. Like, that sacral chakra energy is a literal portal not only to birth, like, human beings, but also to birth projects um, or writing or, you know, whatever it is that you want to work on, whatever thing that you are thinking about in your mind that you want to bring to fruition whether it's like a physical thing, if you're writing a book, or if you want to be magnetic and connect with that magnetic energy. And so I think that's really Mm -hmm. cool, because self-pleasure is a perfect way to open up that creative flow and to open up that energetic portal. Exactly. Once I discovered that and learned that, that was like enough of a permission slip for me to be like, I'm going to explore this more. Cause I think I found like the pleasure aspect of, of doing it for the pleasure still felt a little bit like shameful for me. But once I realized like there's more to it and I can actually unlock deeper parts of myself, I can tap into creativity. Like I didn't know before, um, and really take my like energy and really feel much more magnetic. I was like, wow, that's really freaking cool. Like we have so much power as women. Um, it, I really think it's like so magical to be, wi- uh, to be a woman. Now I'm like so grateful to be a woman. I'm like, yes, we have so many amazing things and aspects to us that I don't think <laughs> men have. And it's really freaking cool. And I would love all women on this planet to be like, oh my gosh, we're so powerful. I'm so grateful to be a woman versus I feel like growing up, we think, oh, it's so hard being a woman. We have to wear makeup and do like face creams and have to have babies and have periods and stuff. And it's like, no, this is amazing actually. Like, let's see it as like a gift um, because that's really what it is. We just need to discover that we can tap into the power that exists there rather than seeing it as this um, disadvantage. We really do grow up thinking that we as women are very disadvantaged by all of these things that we feel like we have to do like like you said putting on makeup and shaving your legs and having periods and just having to be looking well all the time we're shamed into even like not having emotions like oh you're having a bad day or you know feeling your energy's a little bit off today oh you must be pmsing and I'm just so over this culture mm-hmm. where like we're shamed by the natural things that our body does like bleed every month or by these natural urges that we have like wanting to have pleasurable sex mm-hmm. and it just not being for that other person. Yeah. Like it's for yeah. you too. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's um, I think a lot of women probably don't, have sex that's pleasurable for them still um hopefully we can move away from that (laughs) at some point it is not about the man (laughs) we get to be selfish (laughs) it gets to be about us as well um it's so important so so important what's the point otherwise (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. we're not just put on this planet to have babies like the point of sex is to enjoy it no no and the other thing too is that there's a lot of stuff i think growing up i thought i thought it was all around the man the the man in the relationship with or the other person let's say and i was never able to be you know how you'd see people like being like slutty or like dancing and all that kind of stuff and my issue with that that I realized now is that it was very performative. Like we're taught to be that way for the man, like act this way or show the skin or whatever. And that's actually not the right way about it because that's performative. That's doing it for someone else. And what I've discovered is like, when you go on this journey of like a sexual awakening and, and connecting with your sexuality, 
you actually realize that you can do all of those things. And like, it's really fun to be in that maybe more like slutty energy, but it's for you. Like it's, it's coming naturally and it's not this performative thing that you're doing to please someone else, if that makes sense. And so that's the cool journey that I've been on where I'm like, oh, now I actually understand that it's not, it's not because I'm doing it for him. I'm doing it because it feels good for me. And I'm intuitively doing this. And this is where it kind of ties in with embodiment, which is what embodiment's all about. It's all about coming from within and like not being structured, just going with the feeling, intuitively moving your body in a way that feels good. And then that naturally is like sexy and feels good and magnetic rather than being this like performer and actress, which is what we think we have to be because of porn and things like that, right? <laughs> It's really, as you're speaking, what came to mind was like the difference between actually, you know, embodying the confidence that you have within, like we're all inherently confident beings, but you know, we grow up and as we grow up, we kind of stuff ourselves into these various boxes of society and we start following these quote unquote rules that everybody has and everybody's got different rules here and different rules there and different rules there. And so we kind of lose that confidence. But when you step into this feminine embodiment of your sexual energy, you take that back and you take back that power. Whereas the more performative side of sexuality is really portrays a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you, there, there are two different ways that I want to take this conversation. This, (laughs) (laughs) the first thing that came to mind was like, I feel like, if you did a survey of men on the street or, you know, or anybody on the street and you ask them like, what is a really important trait for your partner or, you know, prospective partner to have so many people would say confidence. And I'm sure that they're not talking about performative confidence they're talking about embodied confidence. Mm. And the mm-hmm. other the other thing that came to mind when you're talking about performative confidence is how we're almost, you know, conditioned to do everything for your partner, for the man in the relationship. Um, but then we're shamed for it. And so we create, like, there's this dissonance within where it's like, well, you need to do everything for him. But then when you do you're shamed for being a slut or a whore or whatever it Mm. might be, which just leads to like all of this varying sexual trauma Mm -hmm. and just this dissonance of, I don't know how to be because I'm supposed to be this way, but Mm -hmm. then people make me feel bad for it. And so really that not even middle ground, like fuck everybody else. Like you're not doing anything for him and you're not listening to these other people's opinion just screw it all and embody that confidence for you which is easier said than done (laughs) absolutely absolutely it is it's a long I feel like it's like a lifelong journey of you feel like you get there and then you're like there's more layers there's more to peel back but that's really why I'm so obsessed with embodiment which is a com is like a super complicated thing but at its core is kind of simple which is just peel back the layers keep peeling them back get to know all parts of yourself which includes this like sexual side if there's something that you're a part of you that you're denying or that you're suppressing maybe it's even anger or frustration or resentment or the sexual side if you're denying any part of yourself you can't inhabit your whole self like if you're denying your mind or your body or whatever it is then you're not able to reach that like true embodiment. And there's always going to be like deeper that you can go, but to really feel that embodied confidence and feel like, yeah, I know who the fuck I am. I know, I know who I am. I know what I stand for and it feels really good. Then that just, it just opens up doors for you. It makes life easier because you know, you're operating from your own internal compass rather than that of external things external people opinions society 
Um, and it just means there are much more possibilities and the world really then becomes your oyster versus like, oh, I should do this or I don't want to offend people or, you know, I have to be realistic. Like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> you can literally do anything you want and it comes back to this like, get to know yourself first. Like you have to get to know yourself. And even if you don't know how, you don't know what that means, like set the intention and the path will reveal itself and it will look different for everybody. But that is truly the best thing that every human being can do is just get to know themselves, explore, question, and be okay with not being okay. And be okay with finding like icky and uncomfortable things because you're going to discover a whole lot of that when you dive deep and you've got to be ready for it. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people don't do it because it's, it's scary. You're like, I don't know what I'm going to find if I start digging deep down there to parts of me that I've suppressed for so many years. Um, but it's very courageous and a liberating journey to go on for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no growth in comfort and there's not a lot of comfort in growth. So <laughs> regardless of what you're moving through, and in this case, we're talking about, you know, self-pleasure and embodying your sexual, sensual self, it's going to be uncomfortable because we've been taught that it's an uncomfortable thing. We've been taught that this is an uncomfortable conversation, that it's not something that should ever be talked about. You know, don't talk about it with, even with your partner who is, you know, the person that you should be talking about this with with any if if anybody at all um I mean as well with as with yourself but it's going to be uncomfortable because we've been taught that it is right mm -hmm. and but on the other side of that comfort or on the other side of that discomfort rather is pleasure first of mm -hmm. all <laughs> immense yep. pleasure you know more communication a better connection with yourself and with your partner and or prospective partners and just confidence and embodied confidence. Yeah, totally. Which is and way the thing, more beautiful than discomfort. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. And the thing with the communicating with your partner is, and this is why the self pleasure piece is important because you have to, or it's going to be much easier for you to communicate when you're crystal clear on what you're trying to communicate. When you know, okay, I like this. I actually really don't like that. I would love more of this. If you're not sure on that, it's going to be hard to put into words what you're trying to say. And your partner's probably not going to understand it if you're not clear on it. So that's why the more self-pleasure piece. And the other thing I think a lot of women struggle with this is that they think that it's taking away from their partner because that's what their partner thinks. Like, well, I must not be getting my needs met from my partner if I'm self-pleasuring, which is like, no, 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 that's not the way it works. Those are two completely separate things. You can have both. Like your, your self-pleasure practice is really a discovery, like getting to know yourself and self-love piece. And if we can see it as that rather than making it mean, well, if you're self-pleasuring, I'm obviously not meeting your needs as the other person in the relationship. Um, Cause I think a lot of men have that misconception as well, um, which is completely not true. So there are so many pieces to this. It's such a complex topic really because of the way that we're brought up in society, but it all comes down to communication and talking about it. So the more we can talk about it with our friends and with our, I was gonna say with our families, yes, we can talk about it with our families too with our partners then um just opens up the door for much better sex and much better life <laughs> again there are like two different routes that of conversation that just came to my mind oh my gosh this is so in-depth i love it so much <laughs> like um let's talk about that family piece for a second because i mm -hmm. just like thinking my personal experience and i feel like a lot of people can relate to this is that there was no conversation had mm -hmm. um when i was probably 16 and i started dating more um i never really dated before 16 but um when i started dating i just remember my mom being like do you think you should be on birth control and I remember feeling like really awkward. And my first thought was, well, I don't feel like I need it right now. 
but I don't want to have this conversation again. So I said, <laughs> yes. And so we went to the doctor, I got the birth control and that was the end of that conversation. Mm. There was nothing else ever said. Yeah. And I think that this, you know, these topics of conversation are not only important for yourself and your pleasure and your partner's pleasure and, you know, the, all these, the communication and the confidence and all these different pieces. But when we do this for ourselves and we are able to communicate, not like just have these conversations openly, we then pass that on to any children that we might have in the future which I think is really beautiful because then we're just creating these generations where this is not a taboo topic and where you can communicate openly about your feelings and your thoughts around sex and sensuality and self-pleasure and all of these different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And the thing with our parents' generation is they, I mean, they still don't know. (laughs) No. (laughs) Most of them don't. Like they, they're that generation of like, they literally had babies and like, that's, that's what it was for. So they didn't have a clue. Um, But it was the same with me. It was like, there was no conversation, which I was glad for because I didn't want to have that conversation because it was so awkward. Um, but it is just such a shame, but they, they had no idea. Um, but then that causes, yeah, we have to do all this work now as adults, um, or some people still aren't having the conversations and aren't doing the work. And it's, it's a shame because I really feel like it's, um, kind of stopping us as humans from really forming like the deep, deep, deep connections that we are meant to have, um, if we're not talking about these things. So yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. So the journey that I went on with my own like sexual awakening, shall we say, cause that's definitely, I think there've been two of them now <laughs> and I'm sure many more to come, but that happened right before, um, my partner's son moved in with us. So my stepson, he's 15 going on 16 now. And had I not gone through that, I actually don't know how I would be able to cope right now because he's obviously at an age where he's um, sexually exploring, (laughs) let's just say, um, discovering things, right? So it's really cool now that I've been through this and I'm like totally fine and actually love talking about sex. It's worked out perfectly and um, it's cool that I can now share that with him and with his girlfriend we we all speak openly about sex here but my partner is kind of like this is kind of weird isn't it i'm like <laughs> no it's not weird but i can see why you think it's weird and other people might think it's weird but why like what's weird about it you know what i mean it's much better to have open conversations and spread this like why would we not want teenagers to know about their bodies and how like why wouldn't we want teenage boys to know how to pleasure girls because then it can all be all about them rather than the other way where the girl thinks it's all about the guy. Um, yeah, I, I, it's just exciting because it's totally going to be this like generational shift. They're already, that generation is so much more open um, and it's exciting to see where it can go. But yeah, we have to do the work as adults now. Otherwise, we're not going to know how to deal with the kids and they'll just end up the same <laughs> and have all this work to do. So it's uh yeah it's so complicated though isn't it it is but I think it's really beautiful that you're doing this work and like having these conversations with your stepson and his girlfriend because like you said like sex is not always you know it's not about the other person it's about you and when you have that confidence and you can have these conversations and you can talk to other people, you can talk to your partner and you can be open and honest with yourself, then that's where your partner's pleasure comes from too, right? Like it's a mutual thing where when you can, when both parties involved are confident and are are able to communicate well, or, you know, even if you don't know what it is that you like or what it is that you want, communicate that. Like there's no shame in not knowing or you know there's no shame in wanting to maybe explore a little bit and you know I'm not sure if I'll like this but I'm willing to open up I'm open to trying new things I'm you know have even just saying that is communication it communication is not always this is what I want 
Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's really like just having these conversations is so important. Mm -hmm. It's so important. I'm, it makes me so happy that you're having these conversations with the younger generations and our generation and even mm -hmm. with your partner, like helping him understand why this is so important and why it's so beautiful and why it's not weird. Because like you said, <laughs> it's not it's not weird. Like what is weird is that we've put like boys in one box and girls in one box and, you know, LGBTQ community in this other box and that we can't all just have an open conversation about something that we all naturally desire and naturally like and something that everybody does yeah yeah we've we've made it we've made it be weird like what we've made it mean is to be weird but there's really no reason for it and it's just cool there's like so many so many things to explore and it really it really does like I said like just allow for relationships and connections I think with humans in general to go a lot deeper when we start to talk about these things um, we can cut like the surface crap, you know, like let's have deep conversations and talk about our feelings and talk about sex because it's really freaking cool, actually, like really cool. Um, I used to be a surface level person. Like I used to be super afraid of deep conversations or like somebody telling me their life story because I wasn't sure how to respond. And now I'm the opposite, but it's because I was afraid of that vulnerability and of afraid of going there with myself that I try to avoid it with other people. Um, and now all I want to do is like talk about feelings and talk about like deep things because it's so fascinating and really just does allow for much stronger connections. Like the relationships in my life now are just so much more fulfilling and gratifying and deep um connected it's really really cool like there's much more to us i think as humans than i ever realized because i'm going there now <laughs> and exploring um and life will never be boring when you start to dive into this stuff it gets to be fun and exciting and pleasurable and yeah there's just there's a lot of work to be done but why not try explore and see where see where it takes us um so finding finding people you can talk to and um having those conversations with friends or with your partner is just such a beautiful opening of a door and you kind of do have to be like that courageous person to start the conversation because at first it's like oh what are they going to say how is this going to go but it gets easy with time and it really does just open the door to like a beautiful new world that um I would love everybody to to explore and get to know I think that's so powerful because I really like that's all that we crave as human beings is connection like meaningful connection soul filling connection and we have to be able to have that same relationship with ourself and embody that energy that feminine energy to be able to carry that forward into our relationships with other people. And I think that's just so, there are so many different layers and it's all so beautifully connected. And it really mm -hmm. is just, it's so powerful. And I'm yeah. sitting here thinking like, for anybody who's listening and is like, okay, I would love to embody this feminine energy. Um, I would love to learn you know about myself in this kind of feminine energetic way but maybe I'm not quite ready for self-pleasure like what is something that I can do to start to begin to embody that sexual energy without making myself like totally uncomfortable I'm... Mm -hmm. so what yeah. would be something that you would Six. Yeah, that's a great question because you have to respect like your boundaries and where your edges. And if you've never gone deep with yourself yet, like going straight into a self pleasure kind of thing can be maybe too much, especially if you have trauma there. Um, really, though, the feminine embodiment piece and the best part 
the thing that I recommend to everybody, all women to do is to move their body in a safe space, close your door, lock your door, lock your door and start to intuitively move your body. Um, you can put music on and this is the first piece to help you really get comfortable um, with yourself to really start with the self acceptance and the body acceptance, which a lot of us struggle with um, as women. So creating a safe space, it can be like five minutes a day to tap into your feminine energy by moving and dancing. And the embodied piece of that is it needs to be non-structured, non-linear. So closing your eyes and moving from the inside and just seeing what would feel good to my body and like, how does my body want to move and see how your body starts to respond. Um, and at first, when I first started this, I, there was a lot of resistance. Um, and I was like, why am I doing this? This isn't doing anything. But let me tell you, it really does help to tap into your feelings, tap into um, parts of yourself and uncover things that you are suppressing by giving yourself that quiet time to just explore. And from there, I started to get more comfortable and started to feel my body become more like fluid and moving more. And I could feel like my hips loosening up. And I started to, uh, and I started to do that in the mirror and started to look at myself when I was moving and dancing. And this, this kind of came, I think a little bit before, no, this was actually for me was after the, the sexual piece I dove right in, <laughs> but this is a great kind of segue to that with starting to move your body and you can start to feel pleasure just by moving your body, which is what the feminine is all about. Um, so that's such a great piece, but yeah, working, working with somebody one-on-one -on -one or in a group um, setting is great as well. If you're wanting to dive into this with that support, um, that was how I got into this and it was so transformational um, for me, just having somebody, my old coach said to me, she was like, if you want to message me, like, tell me about the orgasm you just had. And I remember thinking, why would I ever tell her <laughs> about an orgasm I just had? Like literally never. And by like a couple of weeks in, we are talking about dildos and orgasms and all of this. It was like, it was absolutely terrifying at first, but just having that support and somebody you can talk to about things, like it will transform um, the way that you are and the way that you show up. Cause you realize like, it's not as scary at, as you do it more and as you feel supported in that. So that would be um, my few bits to start with. I love that a lot. And I think it's a, it goes back to having these connections, right? When you do this kind of work with other people who are on the same journey as you, you get to do this individually. You know, you're on your own personal journey, exploring your personal body and your personal being. But you get to do it with other people and you get to have these conversations with them and know that one, you're in a safe space, two, you're being supported, you're not being judged, and you're just able to open up a little bit more. And those kinds of connections, those are right back to what we were just talking about, the soul feeling connections, the deep connections that we all crave naturally as human beings. So I think that that's really, that's a really important piece and very excellent advice mm, yeah and the other thing too is like I think I think a lot of people could sort of be thinking well why would I why would I dive into this because it is it is in a way like opening a can of worms but I know from having these conversations when I started to openly talk about this with people I was blown away by the number of people who would tell me that they either don't have sex with their partner, they have a shit sex life, they got married when they were, had no, like not having sex, all of these different things, like people start to open up and it's so much more common than we think. So if you don't enjoy sex, if you're not having sex, if you just don't feel confident or you feel stuck, like this is a, these are great reasons to start to explore this because it doesn't need to be that way. Like it can be exciting and fun and, amazing and pleasurable um but it does take that courage to be like i'm gonna i'm gonna go down this route and i'm gonna start to explore and it is gonna feel uncomfortable um for sure but it's so worth it and yeah it's i would just say start to have these conversations and you'll see like 
a lot of people are not tapping into their like full pleasure potential um, and potential of life, I feel, because we aren't talking about these things. We therefore think it's normal and it has to be this way and it, it doesn't. Um, but we just need to open the door and start to talk about it more so that we can realize that um, there's another way, essentially. I would venture to say, I would dare to say that it is actually seen as normal to stop having sex after a period of time or like when you enter a new relationship and you've got like this honeymoon phase where everything is really great and peachy and then when as you kind of move out of that phase it's seen as normal to not have so much sex or to have less pleasurable sex or to even like reach a point in your life where you just stop having sex like all of these things are seen as normal Mm -hmm. and it's really like you know, I think there is a component to relationships where you have this honeymoon period and it's just bliss and everything is great and, you know, your partner is perfect and you're just having all the tons of amazing sex. And then as you develop your relationship more and more and you kind of dive deeper into that relationship, there has to be something for you to hold on to. You know, sex is a ginormous component in a relationship, but it's not mm-hmm. the only thing. And So there has to be something to connect the two of you. And so from there, I would say, you know, I'm not a relationship coach, but just kind of, I guess, a personal perspective or maybe like what I would desire in a relationship would be, you know, to have honesty and trust and communication and all of these really beautiful components go into that relationship. But with those things... You know, even though your honeymoon phase is over, with all of these beautiful things that are connecting, like keeping the two of you connected in your relationship comes, is you know, there's still sex involved. And it's maybe viewed differently and not so, I'm not sure how to phrase this, but like, you know, like in the honeymoon phase where it's, you know, it's just like so much sex all the time. Mm -hmm. it's almost expected I guess um and then as you move out of that you're you know you bring that sexual component with you into this new phase of your relationship but then this is where the communication really comes Mm. in this is where you get to be like we're moving into this new phase of our relationship this is what you know we've has previously kind of happened and and this is where we're going, like having those conversations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what's that's so true. That's exactly how it happens for like everybody. It's the first like six months to a year are amazing. But I think what is maybe missing there is that you're having sex, but it's all around like the sex is in what's then missing when you move into your relationship is that really deep connection and intimacy. And that's why you then stop having the sex. So when I'm talking about sex, I'm not talking about like, like literal just penetration. I'm talking about (laughs) like the intimacy around it. It doesn't actually have to even involve that. You can still create this like sexual connection and energy around you without actually physically even touching. Um, And that's where you are able to get really deep with your partner and create this like insane chemistry and intimacy um, when you, yeah, when you're having these conversations, like you said, when you're speaking openly, when you're getting to know each other on this like deeper level and exploring deeper parts of yourself, like emotionally and <laughs> physically, um, it just allows for that, yeah, beautiful uh, intimacy and, and connection. And those, like, that's really the secret for then the great sex and pleasure. Like, you need, you need that you need to be like vulnerable and and be able to be intimate. And that's why it's really, really hard to do that with somebody and let the walls down with somebody else if you haven't done it with yourself first. Um, It's much easier to go on that journey by yourself. You can still be in a relationship, but explore yourself um, like with embodiment and exploring like emotionally parts of yourself that you've suppressed um, and getting to know yourself on a much more intimate level, because once you know yourself and once you feel more sure of yourself and you 
start to feel more confident in yourself, then it's easier to show that side to your partner. But it's hard to like reveal this this side of you or these parts of you that you don't even know yourself yet. Like that's really going to be challenging, which is why the the personal piece and the the personal mastery and personal practice with everything is so important. Um, because then we can go there with somebody else once we've been there with ourselves. Then for anybody who's like, how do I get into that? Like, how do I start to learn about myself and uncover all of my emotions around sex and sensuality? And like, where do I start with this? Where, where would you guide people to start? And not even necessarily in sex itself whether that's sex with a partner or self-pleasure. Because when we're talking about feminine embodiment, we're talking about emotions and the, that flow and that energy, that's a part of every single part of your life. Like that's a ginormous <laughs> component to every single part of your life. And it all leads, like, I'm just like envisioning this river where you have like all of these things, like the water is flowing and it's just like picking up all of this stuff that goes along with it. So you start to talk about your emotions and identify your emotions around relationships, relationship with yourself, relationship with a partner, your sexual relationship with yourself, your sexual relationship with partners, even even looking at your past relationships mm -hmm. and the patterns that have happened there and all of these things like blend together and you get to this place where you just have this really beautiful relationship and conversation with yourself that you then get to carry with your partner like i'm just envisioning this river <laughs> is what well, is coming to my mind that is but very for... feminine <laughs> like yeah. the, the flowing river like that is the feminine um so the the feminine is all around pleasure and this is where it kind of ties in because and we're not just talking sexual pleasure either how can you experience and bring more pleasure into your every day? Like it doesn't even have to start in this sexual way. It's like, now I can experience pleasure through like my cup of tea and the, the water, feeling the like the hot water on my lips and small things like that. The more you can tap into pleasure in your daily routine and daily life, that, a lot, that is expanding your pleasure capacity to experience pleasure in all, all parts of your life. Um, so there's so many, the journey is different for everybody. And for some people, like the sexual part is not where they want to start. Other people are like, let's dive right in. But really, it's just this journey of getting to know yourself, self-discovery. Let's see what is here. And it is going to be uncomfortable and scary because you don't know what you're going to find when you start to unravel the layers. But it's worth it because otherwise, you know, like you said at the start, like, we are always growing as humans. We need to always be growing. Otherwise we're dying. Like we, if we choose not to grow, we know where we'll be in five or 10 years time. You'll be in the same place, doing the same job in the same relationship. Um, and we get to choose whether that's what we want or whether we're going to like dive into the unknown. So for anybody who's wanting to explore and see where the past takes them, just set an intention and that can be, I want to get to know myself more. I want to do this discovery and start to curate your life and who you surround yourself with and your social media feed with people who are kind of sharing this message and doing this work so that it becomes more normal to you. Like these conversations that we're having now um, and the discovery work. And yeah, if, it, if people want to dive in and work with a coach one-on-one, -on -one, obviously, you can reach out to me. I love to guide women into this space of really peeling back the layers and getting to know themselves because we are so incredibly powerful. We are so, so powerful. Um, and if we can just peel back the layers, really release anything that is stored and stuck in our body. Um, and those are the things that are holding us back from really creating what we desire then we can just live this most beautiful, liberating and empowering life. And oh, the world would just be this like magical place if every woman was living in her true power. I truly believe that and we'll get there <laughs> for sure. But yeah, there's so much, there's so much can be said, there's so much work that can be done. But I think just 
starting the discovery and being curious and being like, let's dive in and see where it takes me. Having that open mind is a beautiful place to start. I love that. And I love, I think you're absolutely right that like, you know, we're going to get there. And I feel like, I don't know if this is because, you know, I've immersed myself and surrounded myself with women who are doing this kind of work and who are stepping into their feminine power and they're being bold and they're just doing whatever the fuck they want. And they're, you know, living their truest lives and stepping into their truest beings. But I feel like we're experiencing this massive shift where all this is happening where and not just women but men too are stepping into that feminine energy they're stepping into their feminine power because like I mentioned earlier we all have masculine and feminine energies within our body regardless of how we identify so we are seeing this shift where so many people are stepping into their feminine energy and embodying that feminine side of themselves and maybe that's just me having immersed myself in that world and kind of only seeing that um, because I definitely know that there are you know people who are not doing this work but I feel like we are seeing this massive shift and feminine embodiment is it's coming it's coming (laughs) y'all yeah I feel the same I'm like everybody already knows this and is doing this but then I go out into the real world and I'm like oh yeah no there's still (laughs) there's still still a lot of (laughs) yeah for sure but it's really cool how we can, you know, we get to choose, we get to choose who we surround ourselves with. Everybody knows like you are the sum of the five people that you hang around or whatever it is. I think it might be more than that now, but um, yeah, like curate your newsfeed. If you spend time on Facebook or Instagram, like follow these kinds of women, because it's such a permission slip. I feel like once I saw the way that women, some women were living, like creating businesses that were feminine led, like feminine, like feminine leadership versus um, hustle, like hustle culture. I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. This is now like, thank you for showing me the way. And now I want to create my business and life to be led in that way. Or seeing these women making like multi seven figures from having these amazing businesses and leading of integrity and Um, having these amazing values it's like wow it's just a permission slip and that's what I love like that is the feminine way where we're not seeing these things it's like competition or jealousy of like why is she doing that why does she get to do that but it's paving the way for other women so surround yourself with these people on social media and um, we can use that to our advantage and using social media as well as a great way to meet up with people in real life and you can literally yeah I I think it's such an advantage now to like use social media to connect with people in your local community and find people that you really do resonate with because I think that's a struggle for a lot of people as well is that when they start to go on this like growth journey they start to outgrow the people that they've grown up with or that they have in their circle right now and that is a huge struggle and I think that deters people from doing that work because then you feel alone because you don't have anyone to talk to but there are infinite possibilities and resources if we choose to leverage them and tap into them um there's a solution for everything we just have to trust that it's out there our people are out there um our partner is out there if we're still desiring and calling that person in like we get to choose all of it um it's pretty cool pretty cool actually it is really cool and i love that social media has created all of these connections to like you said meet up in person or even meet online like without social media I would never have been connected with you or even the person who brought me to you Mm -hmm. right so like there's just so (laughs) many beautiful connections that can be made when you start to surround yourself with people who are on this journey with you Mm -hmm. and I think that it's really like this journey is so empowering but it it is often branded as losing you know you lose friends maybe family members you know you come out of alignment with relationships with other people with this connection and that connection and you start to break down this person that you were or this person that you had 
become in order to fit into these boxes. And so while, yeah, you lose all of those things, but you gain yourself Mm. and your truest being and you gain these soul connecting these soulmate relationships in all areas of your life so first of all with yourself and with your friends and with your family and with your partner like you gain so much more than you lose and you know we've both been on that journey and I'm sure um, that you would agree that it's not easy Mm. it's quite a difficult journey but on the other side of that is just so much beauty and so much being yeah and I don't think it's I don't think everybody has to lose something I think it's obviously going to be different for everyone I mean I definitely know people who have gone on this wild ride and have stayed friends with the same people that they grew up with like it really depends um it depends on obviously your situation but yeah there's so much to gain and there's so much to um discover um and yeah, sometimes I think, well, wouldn't it be so easy if I just wanted like a simple life and didn't grow and, and change and challenge. But then I think, nah, <laughs> I would be missing <laughs> out because there's like, I think when you go on this journey, you realize like there is an endless amount of possibilities of ways to feel of magic we get to explore. So it's that choice of like, do I want to live kind of a, like a mediocre life that I'm happy, I get by, I have good relationships, or do you want to live like an extraordinary, magical, like wild (laughs) life? I want to live that life where it's like, there are no limits to what I can do and what I can create and how I live my life and just being all the things like I, I want that. And that is not the easy road to take, but it is so, so worth it. Um, and yeah, there's no such thing as like realistic or like, that's what I should be doing. Like, no, there's uh we get to create and we get to choose and it's super exciting, but yeah, it's not, it's not an easy journey. It's definitely going to be challenging. Um, but through the challenges come growth opportunities and um yeah that's exciting to me anyway it's really exciting to me too and so if anybody is listening to this podcast episode and they're like okay i'm ready to start this journey but i have a partner and i'm not really sure that they want to go on this journey with me i'm not really sure how to bring it up um kind of how do I say to my partner, hey, I really want to embody this feminine energy and I really want to communicate openly with you about all of my desires and pleasures and all of these things. What do you say to someone like, just go for it? Just be like, hey, we need to talk. <laughs> Which sounds That's very ominous. Like. Yeah. Yeah, those words are scary when you when they come out of your partner's mouth. That is you never a good talk. feeling. <laughs> um, it really depends on what your partner's like. If your partner's, if you have a super supportive partner, which is just Deal. yeah, the ideal scenario, <laughs> then it's going to be much easier. But honestly, I would say just go like start the journey by yourself because if you're if you have more of those like people pleasing tendencies and you you do look for more external validation you're going to easily be which most people do you're going to be easily swayed if your partner responds in a way that's not like open arms supportive like go for it hun you're going to be like oh you know if they're like that sounds stupid then it's going to be much you're going to be much quicker to shut the idea down of like yeah you're right i don't know what i'm thinking like it's much easier in relationships, like you focus on you, you, if this is what you want, if you're curious, if you're open-minded and you're ready to go and explore and see what you find and discover like your truth and peel back the layers, then just go for it. And the best thing is to inspire through action, especially if you have a partner who's a man, Um, they're much better at being inspired, like witnessing the change and seeing the results. And that's gonna be, 
the thing that they then buy into and they then want to learn more because they're like, yeah, I've seen the shift in you over the last few months and I'm really curious, like what's going on. And I'm not saying keep secrets or anything like that, but you don't really need to share in detail what you're doing. You just need to be, you can even just be like, I'm going to try this new thing. or I'm going to hire this coach. or I'm going to do this course and I'll let you know how it is. Like, I just need you to be supportive of it, but you don't even need to go in detail because I really don't need to know all of the details up front, especially if you don't even know what you're getting yourself into. Um, just focus on you again, not telling you to lie to your partner. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't have to divulge all the details whilst you go on this journey because it's super personal. And then in your own time, you can share um, how it is. But yeah, that is the best thing. Inspire through action. Let them let them get curious and notice the shifts in yourself because they will see them and they will want to learn more. And that can then help um, them start on the path. Cause obviously once you go down this route, you then want to start, you notice all these things about your partner, like, oh my gosh, if only they did this, they would feel better. Or if only they did that. And then you start to want to push stuff on them and change them and control them. Being there, done that, it does not work. So just focus. <laughs> Just focus on you and your growth and trust that they will catch up in time. And that could be three months. That could be a year. Um, but getting to know yourself and getting to know, like, what are you, you know, what are your boundaries? Where is the, where is the line in the sand going to be if, if it comes to that, but focus on you. That's all that you have the control over and the rest will work itself out again, easier said than done, but that's all you can really do. I love that advice. Focus on yourself because you are your most important relationship. 100%. And that's where even with me, I, I, like I mentioned, like I went down that route of trying to control and change my partner because I saw, had all these insights and saw all these things that I knew would help him. But the, the best thing for our relationship was, was where it got to this point of, you know what, I can't, change him um even though there were things that i would have liked to have changed but i was like i'm gonna keep focusing on me and regardless of what that means for our relationship which is a really hard point to get to where you're like it doesn't mean that i'm okay with things going either way but i have to be in a way like i'll keep focusing on me i'm gonna keep doing the growth and doing the work on myself and just trust that whatever needs to happen will happen and that was such an immediate shift for, for our relationship. And once I completely let go, my partner then was like starting to be like, okay, I, I want to know more because I let go. And he was able to come to that conclusion by himself. Um, the pushing and the controlling never works. It doesn't. I feel like that is something that we can all relate to where we've all been in the situation where we want to hold on to what we have even if that means not being our true selves or, you know, trying to change this other person. And it just doesn't work that way, that way. And you get to see that reflected back. I'm thinking in our first podcast episode in part one that we did, I shared a story about how, you know, I had an ex reach out to me after like a super long time and the connection just wasn't there. It was just, it was just like a no. And so mm -hmm. I had said in that episode that part one, that I was really proud of myself and I wasn't proud of myself, you know, in that moment where I just kind of shut down that conversation and ended it. What it was, I wasn't, you know, proud of myself because that's what I did. I was proud of myself because I could see that growth where I was able to recognize that I had grown and changed as a person. I have stepped into this being that I am now and I'm continually growing and evolving and he just isn't. Mm -hmm. And so I, was proud of myself because I was able to see that and I was able to stay stick to that boundary and to those boundaries that I was never able to set and keep when we were together. Mm. You should be proud. That's, that's amazing. And it's so incredible when we get to witness that growth in ourselves. It's such a great feeling. Um, I love that. I actually had something similar. I realized right yesterday, um, I was doing, I was in a workshop, uh, an embodiment workshop um, that somebody else was leading because I love, <laughs> I love to keep doing this work on myself. Of course I have to. Um, 
be a true embodiment of what I'm sharing. But I realized we were doing this practice and it was um, in the noticing the times with our partner where we used to get triggered and closed down and allowing our bodies to like respond in a way where we're opening and softening. And I realized I thought back to like a couple of years ago where my partner would say something or do something or his tone would be off or he would not listen or whatever. And I would get so triggered that I used to like give him the silent treatment for days. Um, not intentionally, but I, I would close off so much that it literally took me days to open back up and it was all ego and like her and, you know, inner child wounding and stuff, but it, it didn't feel good either, but it would literally take me days for the walls to come down and for me to really open and soften. And to look back and be like, oh my gosh, that hasn't happened in like at least a year, like a long time um, or feels like a long time. And now I've actually noticed that when he uses the tone or he starts to get defensive, I'm able to step into my feminine energy and really soften and be in my more like playful state and come at it with love rather than the fear and the ego that I used to and kind of diffuse the whole situation and like we can move on but it was really cool to witness that and think oh my gosh i have come so far (laughs) um the silent treatment is never a good idea but sometimes you just can't help it because you're just acting from that like fearful and wounded place but yeah it's amazing to to witness the growth the growth really is beautiful even when it's uncomfortable but it's something that we all have to experience and move through and like we had talked about earlier, it's uncomfortable, but on the other side of that discomfort is your truest being and like all of this beautiful growth that you have done mm-hmm. and all this learning that you have done. Yeah. <sighs> oh my gosh, this is such a powerful conversation. <laughs> I love it. I love, love it. it. I could keep this going forever, but I know that you have somewhere else that you need to be. <laughs> um. <laughs> Which is very unfortunate. How dare you put something else on your schedule today? But <laughs> I am part so three sorry. coming later, guys. Yeah, part three yeah. coming later. But let me just say um, a book that comes to mind. If have you read the book Pussy? If not, no, I haven't. <sighs> okay, the book it's called Pussy, and even saying that word a couple of years ago, like oh, I can't say that. Um, really, really good book. It's by. Um, Mama Gina, I can't remember what her full name is, Regina something, but she is just a powerhouse of a woman. Um, But the book is called Pussy and it's a really, really, really good book that I would recommend all women read. Um, Yeah, it's, it kind of talks about everything that we've been diving into today, but it's really just liberating to hear a woman share and talk about these things and, um, yeah, we definitely recommend. And if you go and read it, let me know what you think about it. Would love to would love to chat on it. Speaking about letting you know and connecting with you, if people are listening and they're like, I need to connect with Steph. She's so amazing. I want to work with her. I want to talk to her. I want to reach out to her. Where are people going to find you? The best place to find me is on Instagram. I love Instagram. <laughs> My handle is I am Steph Morris. Um, DMs are always open if you listen to this and you're like oh my gosh I want to talk about this or I'm terrified but I'm going to message her anyway (laughs) I would yeah I'd love to connect um, and have any conversation or yeah you can talk to me about my services or whatever it is there and then I also have a website which is stephmorris.co but yeah excited to, to carry on this conversation with many women because it's such a powerful and liberating one and clearly I have no problem talking about this now, but you would not believe I was the same person as two years ago. So it's, uh, it's possible for all of us and maybe somebody listening will be now that person who goes and like talks to all the women friends about sex, which I hope they do because it's a great conversation. It's very fun to have this conversation. It is. I, I hope that so many women step into this conversation. I know that I'm going to start trying to step into this conversation baby steps yes baby steps steps. so as a final 
a final thing. I ask this at the end of every guest podcast episode, and you've already answered this, of course, in part one, but let's talk about what does luxuriously fierce mean as it pertains to sex? Ooh, that is a good question. Okay. As it pertains to sex, I think just stepping into your true power and experiencing like mind blowing pleasure in your life that feels luxurious to you and wild and crazy and fun. Um, so many words coming to mind. They're all juicy words, (laughs) but yeah, I think just what's just coming up is like pleasure and fun and luxury, create luxury sex because it's a thing. (laughs) <laughs> tap into that and it's going to be mind-blowing i love that so much oh steph thank you so much for being here part two part three is coming <laughs> thank it- you and did you ever think you'd be talking about luxury sex there we go no no <laughs> i never thought that that would be a topic of conversation on the luxuriously fierce podcast but here we are and i'm loving it so <laughs> oh it's awesome com- thank so- you part three i'm serious we're coming back thank you so much (laughs) love this conversation it's so important and um yeah would love to continue absolutely me too thank you again for being here thank you so much